After more than 25 years of engagement in disasters all over the world, how do you find motivation to continue? For 25 years, I've been asked that question when returning to the safe haven of Oslo. From contexts of armed conflicts, natural disasters, famine, or infectious diseases. And my answer is simple. I get my main motivation when I meet other volunteers. Volunteers that very often live in the midst of the misery themselves. Volunteers that risk their own lives to save others. Volunteers that recognize the needs, learn from the experiences, and above all, see the results. Because there are a lot of results, not only on the local level. We see a huge fall in poverty in the world. Hunger is declining. In health inequality, is falling. And we see that the people that the number of people that get access to clean water and education is increasing. And the child mortality is decreasing. And that is happening in the same time span where we have had a huge increase in the world's population. But not everything is in progress. The number of people killed or affected by war and conflicts has increased since the year 2010. Afghanistan, Somalia, South Sudan, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Central Republic of Africa, Congo, I could have continued. And more than 60 million people are refugees today because of war and conflict. And in addition to that, the climate change is already here. More people are hit by natural disasters because of more floods, drought, and heavier winds. They have to leave to survive. So we are living in a changing world with a lot of opportunities. We should all link ourselves into the Global Opportunity Report. But there are also a lot of challenges. Challenges where we need volunteers that make a difference. Someone to the left here is an ambulance driver inside Syria crossing the front lines in the midst of the gunfire every day. And together with the other volunteers, they are the, have the lead role in the biggest humanitarian crisis for decades. Some said since the Second World War. Doing the best they can to give humanitarian assistance to people in desperate need. And without those volunteers, the situation inside Syria would have gone from awful to indescribable for more than 13 and a half million people in need of humanitarian assistance right now. And those volunteers are also the lead implementing party and partner to the UN, channeling the majority of the UN relief into the whole country because they are present and have access. To me, someone is a true hero. He makes a difference. And he shows us all what humanity is all about. And so does Stefania. Many of the refugees and the migrants 
might be met by her when they enter into the island of Lesbos in Greece, asking, where am I? How can I leave? And information is life-saving and life-enhancing. They need timely, relevant, and reliable information to know how can they leave safely? How can they get the assistance they need? And how can they find their missing family members? Have you seen my daughter? She's only three years old. Have you seen my mom? And that information from the volunteers makes those people less vulnerable to traffickers and smugglers. And you may say that that information could be written on maps or posters. But if you have been afraid for years, and the only thing you really need is someone to trust, Ground attention is the only thing that matters, meeting a person you can actually trust. The picture of humanity could also be the picture of Adam. When he meets the people refugees and migrants entering into Norway and Østfold. With dignity. Adam is a refugee himself. He is now a member of the Norwegian Red Cross Rescue Corps. And he used his first aid skills but in addition to that, he has language skills and cultural skills. So he is a good interpreter. So he uses his skills to the benefit of others. Stefania, helping them and protecting them. And it's still needed, not only in Greece or in Italy. And Europe might, big, might build up big walls and close their borders. But Europe cannot close their eyes to the need the people have for protection and assistance. That's why it's needed with people that care. The fourth and the last volunteer I will talk about today is Tahir in the midst of the picture. Here at the top of Gullupigen, the highest mountain in Norway. Together with uh, refugees and migrants and volunteers from all over the country in a yearly event, trying to reach the top. And that year, representatives from 56 nationalities were present at the top in the same weekend. Tahir is blind. And he has got a disease that makes it absolutely essential for him to do physical practice. And I remember very well when he came up to the top and uh, he said, from here, the world looks wonderful. Tahir, reaching the summit, someone crossing the front lines, both are world-class achievements. But they would not have made it, made it, if it hadn't been for support from others. Someone that facilitates, someone that motivates, someone that makes it possible for them to cross their borders. The man with the bear, Vidar is Tahir's supporter. And probably without knowing it, Tahir is an enormous inspiration to many people. He is to me every day. And from being a small 
vulnerable boy arriving to Norway, three years old. He is now a resource person for the disabled all over the world. It is absolutely essential to do what you can to make a difference. But to make a difference, you have to be present. You have to get access. Here you see the map of Syria with 7,500 volunteers from Syrian Arab Red Crescent societies present all over the country across all front lines. You don't see the front lines because they are changing. But we need access to the people in need. So you also need diplomatic abilities to negotiate with the parties to get access to the people with medicine, with food, with clean water. And if you see it here, present on the map, you see that SARC is an example to all of us. Because they are present. Because they are available. Because they do have access. And because they are trusted. Trusted of the different parties and the most important, trusted by the people we want to assist. And they show us the power of volunteerism. But they can not solve the conflict. And if the world are unwilling or unable to find a political solution, they will have to continue to risk their lives to save others. And we can't allow their efforts to be meaningless. Sadly, Syrian Red Crescent has lost more than 60 of their volunteers when they are crossing all the front lines since the war started. In their uniforms, with the only intention to give medical assistance. And people today are denied health. The strategy is to keep people in besieged areas. And here you see 39 people evacuated out of a besieged area inside Aleppo. Elderly, disabled, people in desperate need of medical treatment. Followed by the volunteers and with the only protection with the flag of the Red Cross Red Crescent. So they are the answer to the question I'm often asked, how do I get motivation? But I hope that one day I will be asked another question. Sven, based on your experience, what must we do to prevent and alleviate human suffering in the world? And in addition to the obvious answer, to find a political solution. My answer will be twofolded. First, stand up and stand united for the minimum humanitarian standards of international humanitarian law, of human rights, and of refugee law. Refuse to accept that someone would like to compromise with those minimum standards of humanity and solidarity when they find it suitable and demand that those minimum standards will be followed, also in difficult times when people feel that it is tough. It took us decades and even centuries to build up those rules as common standards in the world. Don't accept that someone would like to weaken or even abolish those standards. And my second answer to the question, 
is actually the main message here today and a challenge to each one of us. Because I think that the faith of humanity is up to you and me as individuals. Interconnected in a chain. That interconnectedness can make a difference as a collective. And that would show the power of humanity. But dear friends, please remember that no one can care for everyone, but everyone can care for someone. Thank you very much for caring. <laughs>